If you're serious about getting to Santiago de Compostela, then you need to prioritize foot care. After this video, you will have the exact method that I used to walk the entire Portuguese Camino without getting a single blister. For the best Camino de Santiago advice, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I upload a new episode every Thursday. Hi, I'm Alex. And on my blog, Backpacking Brunette, I've shared loads of advice for walking the Camino de Santiago. From what to pack to how to avoid bed bugs, you can find lots of information about getting to Santiago de Compostela. In this video, I'm sharing the shoes, the socks, and the seriously simple trick that allowed me to walk from Porto to Santiago de Compostela without getting a single blister. Let me just start off by saying that blisters are a serious problem on the Camino. When I think back to my time on the trail, I have a lot of good memories, and one of them is not watching my walking buddy Vanessa spend every evening lancing her blisters with a hypodermic needle. Yuck. Even if you're someone who doesn't normally deal with blisters, I'm guessing you're also not someone who normally walks 15 miles per day. When you're putting that much wear and tear on your feet, stuff like this just tends to happen. But don't take that as blisters being an inevitable part of the Camino. There are things, there are steps that you can take to prevent them. It all starts with the socks. Prior to walking my second Camino, a friend of mine, a fellow pilgrim, recommended that I look into getting a pair of Injinji toe socks. And I am not going to lie, when I first saw these, I wasn't too sure about them. They looked kind of weird, but the minute I tried them on and saw the way and felt the way that they kept my toes separated, I knew that that was going to be a game changer. For the Injinji toe socks, there are a lot of different kinds out there, but the ones that I used are linked in the description below, and it's important that you get a thin pair. They're kind of like a liner, and you don't want to go too thick because with my two sock method, yes, you're going to be wearing another pair of socks. And that second pair of socks is a pair of Belega hiking socks. The ones that I used on the Camino were about quarter crew length. They went up a little bit above your ankle, and they were very cushiony, but still very breathable. Like I said, the Njinji toe socks are linked in the description below, and so are those Belega hiking socks. Now, this next bit is essential to making the two sock method work for you. When I walked my Camino, I brought a little tub just about this big of Vaseline, and that stuff was gold to me on the trail. Every single morning after I would get dressed, I would head down to the albergue kitchen, grab a chair, and Vaseline my feet up. I mean, just going wild with the stuff, putting it between my toes, putting it around my nail beds. Really, you cannot use too much. If you need to buy more, there are always places like pharmacies and grocery stores that you can pick it up along the trail. Once my feet were all slippery, all Vaselined up, I would pull on very carefully the Njinji toe socks. Now you're pulling them on carefully because a wrinkle could mean a blister. Once I had the toe socks on over my Vaseline feet, I would pull on the Belega hiking socks. And yes, even though they were two pairs of socks, my feet were never overheated on the Camino. Same goes for the Belega hiking socks. As I said, for the Njinji toe socks, you wanna put them on carefully to avoid any little wrinkle because again, that could mean a blister. While I really genuinely think that the two socks plus the Vaseline were the reason I didn't get a blister, I should also mention the shoes I wore on the Camino. I opted for a pair of ultra running shoes and the design, which incorporates a super wide toe, I think probably had a little bit to do with my blister free Camino. I will go ahead and link those shoes in the description as well if you are interested in checking them out. And that is it. That is the two sock method. That is my secret to walking the Camino without getting a single blister. While I managed to avoid blisters on the Camino, don't take that as I didn't have any struggles on the trail. I had absolutely the worst shin splint and ended up having to take a rest day because of it. Since then, I have learned a lot about preventing and treating shin splints when you're hiking. If you are interested in seeing a video about that, let me know in the comments.
Now you know my secret to walking a blister-free Camino, but what about training? If you're worried that your busy schedule won't leave you with any time to train, then head to the link in the description and grab the completely free Pilgrim Approach. This video and PDF resource will show you how to walk the Camino even if you don't have time to train. I'm Alex from BackpackingBrunette.com. Thanks for watching and buen Camino! If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share it with someone who has Walking the Camino de Santiago on their bucket list.